Hey, this is Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to talk about machining plastic. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about machining plastic. <clears throat> now, you guys might be wondering why I chose this topic for uh, this week's video. Well, I've actually had quite a few people mention uh, doing work in plastics lately. I've been looking at what they're doing and seeing what's going on, and uh, it's something that I'm really interested in as well because, well, frankly, we do a lot of plastic work around here, right? Um, and it's something that I've had to learn because I really don't have a whole hell of a lot of experience uh, machining plastic. Um, that being said, I wanted to share some of the things that I have learned so far. Um, let's start with the basics. I, plastic. <clears throat> poses some problems that you wouldn't have in metal, like the fact that if you rub plastic, it melts, right? Um, you know, so you gotta really think about how you're doing your cuts. Now, most people, when they're worried about um, cutting something new, they go shallower on their cuts. They go easier on the cuts. Plastic needs to be aggressive, right? You have to get the blade or the cutting part of the tool into the material. Otherwise, you do end up pushing the material instead of cutting it because plastic is more flexible, right? Um, another thing to think about with that is uh, the depth of cut, right? So these handles, right? These, uh, I did orange because you guys on Instagram asked for orange. These were actually my prototype ones that didn't come out right. Uh, and they didn't come out right because I didn't have my depth of cut pro uh, set properly. And when I did my original cam on this, I did it just like I would with um, any other material like aluminum. When I was doing my roughing, I went about 10 thousandths deeper than I would typically do. And then I came around and did my uh, finish pass on the, on the uh, contour here. Well, guess what? 10 thousandths uh, depth of cut on this, even though it was 10 thousandths below the bottom of the surface, meant it was only about a 20 thousandths thick piece of material. So when the shear hog came in and came around, guess what it did? It pushed it down. It didn't actually cut it. Now, the shear hog can re remove a heck of a lot of material. You know, that high positive rake on, on a shear hog does a great job on this. In fact, I did, you know, almost all of my facing and roughing with um, the shear hog. That being said, you have to make sure that you get down below it, right? So I I didn't change, <clears throat> well, I changed the shear hog to go a little bit further uh, down, but then when I did my finish pass, my contour around here, what I did is I told it to go 80 thousandths below, because I had, I had clearance, right? So I went about as far down as I could to make sure that the side was gonna force that engagement with that thin piece of material and it was gonna cut it, you know, period. It didn't have any place to go. You couldn't just push it out of the way. You know, so plastic will do that, right? It'll, it'll deform rather than cut. So you've got to be aggressive with it. Um, other signs that you're not being quite aggressive enough, and some of this you just can't get around. <clears throat> plastic leaves strands, not just burrs, but let's take a look at this. Can you see that? I don't know how well you guys can, can see. Let's see if I can get a good angle on it there. There you go. You guys see all that? There's nothing you can do about that. Right? As the cutter was coming through this edge, right, it leaves burrs on it. There's only so much you can do. Again, now let's say you wanted to come in with a, um, a finishing tool and put a chamfer on there. Five thou, ten thou chamfer, it's not going to cut it. It's not engaging the material enough. You really need to be closer to 20 thousandths before you're actually really you know, getting in there and doing it. You'll get a chamfer, but then you'll still have that same tear out. 
right? It's different from metal. Not a bad thing, just different. Now the nice part about this is any sort of straight edge will clean it up. Let me see, what do I got sitting here? Here we go, got a razor blade, right? You can, you can just do a quick little scrape here because I'm trying to show you this, it's not doing it, but there you go, right? It cleans it up. Not, it's not a big deal to clean up. In fact, this is just how it comes off our, you know, when we're doing the uh, initial operation on that. That's just how it comes off. We clean them up real quick. It doesn't take much. Uh, I've used the corners of uh, parallels to do that. Just, you know, this has to be a hard edge that can scrape that off. So don't be afraid of that. You know, it doesn't mean you're getting a bad cut. Because as you can see, I mean, the quality of the, the finish on that surface finish is really good, right? But you just gotta keep it engaged. Um, let's take a look at the operation that we're doing now. So this is a multi-op uh, setup on this one. You know, op one does everything like this. Op two flips it over, decks it, you know, makes it look like the other side. And then op three puts in the side here. And so we're on op three, which is the finishing uh, part of these right now. So let me go reload the machine and uh, let's take a look at what it does. What do you think? Did you learn something new? Are you uh, interested in doing some plastic? You know, uh, machining some some plastic parts. Uh, they're actually much stronger than you might think. This uh, this nylon pencil strength is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, if we can use this in uh, in collars that hold thousands of pounds of weight on, you know, world's strongest man competition kind of thing, uh, you'd be surprised what these things can hold. Even the 516 thread like that, uh, it's like 700 some odd pounds before it starts to deform. That's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, but, so what kind of projects are you working on? Have you done pl plastic before? What's your experience with it? Share it in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the new camera. This one is a GoPro Session 4, I guess? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this out. It's my first GoPro. I'm used to using other cameras. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my patrons. You know you guys were the ones that made this new camera possible, so I really appreciate that. I'll see you soon.